Hey everyone, Steve here. And today I'm going to talk about V5 and the V5 tree. The reason behind it is, is because I do believe from my own experience that it is by far the most powerful tree that, or modeling navigator, part navigator, tree, whatever you want to call it, that any CAD system has. And there are lots of reasons behind that. Now, if you watched my last video, which was about the best CAD systems, what I think are the best CAD systems, I selected NX. And there are a lot of reasons why I selected NX. But because of the way the tree works in Katia and some of the other little things, in my mind, made that selection of NX very difficult. Because there are things here that are above and beyond any other tree, any other CAD system, any other thing that I've ever seen or used. Before we get on with the rest of the video, if you would do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Also, leave me a comment. Comments are very helpful and useful. I like to see where things are going and helps to steer the direction of the channel to some extent. So those are greatly appreciated. Next, just a little bit of an announcement. Over the next several months, because of a lot of requests, people have asked for a Class A surfacing course specific to Katia, whether it's in V5 or 3D experience. I'm going to start out with a V5 course and then work my way into 3D experience. So for those of you that have asked, it's coming. I promise. And thank you. Now notice on screen I have a surface. Everything is set to default. And what I've created is a geometrical set. These used to be called open bodies. Remember those? And there are more types of bodies. There are what's called order geometrical set, there's body and set, various other things, hybrid bodies, etc. But I'm going to talk about standard geometrical sets and standard bodies. So one of the reasons why I absolutely love the tree in V5 is because I can go, okay, this is my geometrical set. I can change the color of the geometrical set and everything in it is going to change. Okay, So I can set a master color for that geo set. Now I can do some of this in NX, but it's not as fluid as Katia because in NX if I change, let's say, a feature body or something like that, or a feature group, you're, you can pick a color and all things go to that color. The nice thing about my geometrical sets is that right now I have, I just put a surface in there, I change the color of the geo set. If I come in and let me go switch over to generative shape, I will admit I don't miss uh, flopping around between workbenches or applications as they're called now. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put in a intersection. Notice the intersection is white. If I look at the properties of this and go to graphic, within every single body and geometrical set, I have the ability to set the color of the elements within it, independent of anything else in the file. So if I wanted the color of my lines here to be cyan with the thickness of this and the dashed of that, well, that's what I get inside of that geo set. Now, if I were to add in another intersection, it appears in said fashion. And this is great because it allows me to visually see where my geometry is going. Now, if you've seen any of my training or taken any of my training in, in uh, the classes that I've produced, I'm big on color coding things because it makes very, very easy selection on screen. You know what you're working with, you know what you're doing. And it tends to be a little bit more difficult in NX because of the have to go into at an object display, pick it, inherit it, do all the other things. Whereas if my geo set here is set, it just changes that color. Now, if I insert another geo set, just like that, and I decide, you know what, I'm going to offset a plane and then do another intersection, 
it goes back to default because there's a default for the file. All right, it's a global default. And once again, I can come in here, I can go to properties, and I can say, you know what I want? I want surfaces in this set to be, let's say, green, and I want curves in this set to be magenta. So now I have my magenta curves. Actually, let me make them a little bit thicker. I can do that up here. There we go. How easy is that? Now I'm going to do an extrusion. Well, I told it that I want my curves to be, or I'm sorry, my surfaces to be green. Boom, my surfaces are green. Something else that I absolutely love about the tree. There's a lot. I'm not going to be able to cover everything in a 10-minute video. But just to give you an idea, something else that I absolutely love about the tree is that if I'm dealing with geometrical sets like this, the order, timestamp order, has no play in whatsoever in my model. So if I were to create another, let's say another feature, okay? I've got my extrusion over here. Let's say I need another extrusion over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this fella, do that. I'm gonna intersect it here to here, select okay. Now I'm gonna do another extrusion, view in this direction. This time I'll reverse it. And now I have those extrusions. Well, if I want to, now notice I'm not going to reorder anything. I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to move anything around in the tree because I can simply double click on this surface and say, you know what I really want it to link to? I want it to link to this. Okay, so there's my extrusion. It's the last feature in the tree. It's easy enough to go back and link. Now, here's the neat part. If I come in here and say, all right, well, I'm going to double click, or I'm going to define a work object up here, and I'm going to offset another plane. Whoops, offset. Okay, I'm going in this geo set, so everything's going into the correct color. Now, I'm going to go ahead and extrude or I'm sorry, intersect these two and extrude this fella along here, select OK, right? It works out just fine, okay? Not a big deal. Now I'm going to undo that extrusion. Now notice I have this extrude over here. This was made several steps ago. If I double click on it, I can come over here and pick what I want it to link to. As long as the new section that I'm going to use doesn't have a link back to that surface, like say I intersected something to that surface and then drew a new curve and then tried to take that extrude and link it to that intersect, you know, the new intersect, it wouldn't work because there is an actual timestamp history to the parts. There is an actual parent-child relationship that's there, but it's not represented in the tree. And because of that, it's, I know some people don't like that. I know a lot of people that don't like that. It's kind of a Wild West, they say. As I have a hard time, even though the Wild West wasn't really the Wild West, they have a hard time understanding what's going on. What did I build first? What did I build? It's not necessary. Now, the timestamp rules are a bit more stringent when you get into part bodies. And that's fair. Features are stacked on top of features when you're dealing with bodies in that fashion. But when you're dealing with 3D elements like this, extrusions, you know, surfaces, curves, intersections, parallels, pretty much anything in here, it does form a child-parent relationship. Now, if I go to this extrusion, I right mouse click on it and I go to parent-children, I can see what that relationship is. Now, in NX, I have a feature called Browse that does kind of this type of thing. You can see the parent-children. But the nice thing about parent-children is that it's super easy. It's a little easier to use than the one in NX. And 
other things that I can do, right? I have the ability to use their, uh, let's see, where's it at? I seldom use it. It's called historical graph. I can pick a thing and then I get this historical graph. It's a bit more detail. And then I have another option in here, which is called quick select. I pick this and it's going to show me what the parents are and what the children are. And if I want to, if I right mouse click on this, right, I can pick my quick select. I can center my graph. All right, I can right mouse click on this. I can hit my replace out of this and switch this with something else. So I'm inserting parent children, switching things out very, very quickly. And V5, in my estimation, has the absolute best tree functionality there. If I look at another file that I have here, here's my final join. Okay, I want to know what built this base element. I go to quick select, I pick it, and, you know, I have this offset. Oh, okay, there's my offset. And because of the way Katia works, it leaves the original surface alone. And it, whenever I trim or do whatever, it basically trims an extracted copy. Now, I mimic a lot of that inside of NX when I work because it allows me to always go back to the most basic element. So a lot of times my surfaces, my primary slabs, blends, things of that nature, things that I do not want being affected, I do not trim them. I do nothing to them. I will extract and then do whatever secondary functions I need to do on set extraction. And because of the way my tree is set up, I know there's an option inside of trim body that allows you to say, hey, you know, do not trim the original and it'll mimic what Katia does. But I design in such a way where I use design groups. So from one design group to the next, I'm gonna to have to do an extraction to do the trim that I want. And I have my reasons behind that. So there are some capabilities in NX that are absolutely marvelous in the tree, like with the design groups, things that you can do. And a lot of people probably haven't had a chance to explore them. But in Katia, it's always been this way. Okay, so there's decades of people being able to explore how to do things in a tree. Now, I also know in NX that if I were to pick this face, in NX it would show the original feature, and that, that's fine as well. But, again, my primary slabs, I leave them alone. I don't like to trim those. So I have extractions, and then I have to go back in through yet as an extra step. But... I have the most stable element at my beck and call. The other nice thing about Katia is that if I, for some reason, you know, I'll take a look at my, let me show you these curves. Show components, right? So I set up my geo sets, show these components. So that way, again, I have certain colors defined they mean something, you know, theoreticals, tangencies, etc. So if I had to swap visible space and take a look, I can easily suss out what I need. And V5 allows it. Another thing that is super useful that I use a lot is I will come in here and say open subtree. So if I know I'm going to use that surface over and over again, because I'm going to do a bunch of linking to it, I'll open up the subtree, I'll hide that element, and then I just put the subtree up here someplace. I might have two or three of these open. And then every time I need to use that element, I just go pick it right there, I just go pick it right there, I just go pick it right there. So in a lot of ways, the tree makes things faster. The other thing also is in assemblies, you have the component, you double click on the component and it opens up all of the features that went into making that component. Unlike NX, where I have different navigators. I don't like the different navigators. A lot of people do. But for me, I prefer to have everything in the tree right here at the tip of my fingers. So it's all preference to that extent. But the ability to not have to really concern yourself with timestamp order, the ability to set up 
and open up another subtree that stays open. So if I'm in here and I'm, you know, hitting escape, cancel, doing whatever, it's not going to get rid of the subtree. The only way that subtree gets get gets uh, gotten rid of is if I click on it and say I no longer want it and say goodbye. Whereas the browse feature, and I wish the browse feature in X would stay open, or I could open up multiple browse features and have those elements that I know I want to pick over and over again, because those are my base elements, put into those subtrees and be able to quickly select them. So my reasons for picking NX as an overall better system have a lot to do with it's you don't have to put it on a cloud, right? There are incredible surfacing and modeling capabilities in NX. Now, they've really ramped it up. They've improved a ton. You know, if you asked me four or five years ago, I would have probably said Katia still, Katia V5. But now, the, the modeling in NX is caught up. But the one thing that I feel Katia owns above all other CAD systems, like I said, is this tree. And the way the tree is set up and the way it's so interactive with everything on screen. And it's really easy to organize things. As you saw here, timestamp doesn't matter. I can color things the way that I want, put it into the correct geo set. I can put as many geo sets in there as I want, right? I can, if I created another geo set and said, all right, well, I'm going to do an offset, pick that. Okay, again, that's to the defaults. Whatever the defaults are, that's the color that's going to show up. And again, I can come in here and do what I want to do. Now, if I double click on this ex on this intersection and said, oh, you know what? I don't want it to surface number one. I want it to this surface. Select OK. I didn't have to change anything. I didn't have to reorder anything. I didn't have to do a darn thing. Whereas in every other CAD system that I'm aware of, I would have to do a bunch of reordering, monkeying around with the tree. Now, here's the crazy part. There are groups that have been in NX forever. And the groups do not consider themselves part of the timestamp order. So there are ways that you can kind of mimic it, but it's a lot, lot, lot more difficult than this. It's really tricky. So it's not that the technology doesn't exist in NX. It's there, but it isn't developed to this extent. And for me, like I said, the way this works, the way this handles things is above and beyond. It's in, it's incomparable because nothing else comes close to how I can structure and order, color up, uh, properties, naming, all that stuff. It's just, in, in, my, in my eyes, it's honestly the absolute best overall modeling tree.